going on guys? Welcome to From the Red Carpet. For Resident Evil Month, I'm going to be looking at all the characters featured in Welcome to Raccoon City. And Disney just had a huge event the other day. It was uh, Disney Plus Day where they like debuted a whole bunch of new shows and stuff coming to Disney Plus. So we're going to look at that too. So let's dive right in. Starting off with some Disney Plus news. Disney Plus Day happened this past week and we got a good look at some new series coming to the streaming service. Moon Knight is a highly anticipated series starring Oscar Isaac as Mark Spector, a.k.a. Moon Knight. He's pretty much like Marvel's Batman. Let's take a look. I can't tell the difference between my waking life and dreams. The voice in your head. In addition to that, we're getting an Ironheart series, seen here with a new logo. This one will feature Dominique Thorne as Riri Williams, the next to put on the Iron Man suit. Echo, which is a new deaf superhero, will be debuting in the Hawkeye series, and they've just stated that she'll be getting her own spin-off as well. Catherine Hahn will return as Agatha Harkness in The House of Harkness. This is probably going to be like an origin story for her or something focusing around her early days in like her coven. Secret Invasion will be a series that brings back Sam Jackson as Nick Fury. In this one, the newly established S.W.O.R.D. will deal with a Skrull invasion as they have infiltrated Earth a long time ago, impersonating pretty much everybody. She-Hulk will feature Tatiana Maslany as Jennifer Walters, who is Bruce Banner's cousin. She's a lawyer who ends up getting Banner's ability through a blood transfusion, transforming her into another green giant. I'm Jennifer Walters. I'm a normal lawyer. Well, not that normal. These transformations are triggered by anger and fear. Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Miss Marvel stars Iman Vellani as Carmella Khan, a young girl who idolizes Captain Marvel and soon enough has powers of her own. Kamala, let's talk about you. It's not really the brown girls from Jersey City. You save the world. Maybe now they do. I got this right. Totally. Marvel Zombies will get an animated series, following closely to the events of the famed graphic novel. What If Season 2 is in the works as well, said to have stories based around what happens in Phase 4 of the MCU. And this one I'm most excited about, Spider-Man Freshman Year. This will be another animated series focused on the origin of Tom Holland's Spider-Man. The series will take heavy inspiration from the original 1960s comics. And if that's not cool enough, the MCU is actually bringing back the 90s X-Men cartoon. And they're continuing it. Yep, that's right. We're getting new episodes of the 90s X-Men. Well then, if all that wasn't crazy enough, we also have a new Hawkeye trailer. The series will star Jeremy Renner back as Hawkeye, who trains his replacement, Kate Bishop, played by Haley Steinfeld. And the series will debut on November 24th, the same day as Resident Evil. Can I tell you a secret? I'm working with an Avenger. Can I speak to your manager? Didn't realize you were supposed to bring guns. It's almost Christmas. I can't go home until I fix this. Should we be worried? I'll be home for Christmas. I promise. Uh. Sorry, Santa. We're out of regular arrows. Oh my God, trick arrows? We're saving the holidays. 
Studios Hawkeye. First two episodes streaming November 24th. Wakanda Forever will honor Chadwick Boseman in a new way. The film will feature he and Nakia's son. While T'Challa's son won't become Black Panther in the film, Shuri definitely will. So we got some new photos from No Way Home. Here, we can see Peter sitting with Matt Murdock, Happy Hogan, and Aunt May. A lot of fans think this is photoshopped, but I really doubt it. Charlie Cox is definitely in the movie. Also, here's one of our three Spider-Men. This one looks like it's taken around the same time as the Andrew Garfield one on that scaffolding. Possibly at the final battle with the Sinister Six. And, here's a new, legit poster for the film. It features nearly all the villains, and Tom front and center. However, I think this fan-made one featuring the villains is just a bit cooler. As I've said before, Kirsten Dunst will reprise her role of Mary Jane in the film. But, of course, recently the actress came out herself and said that she has nothing to do with it, which could either be a huge misdirect or the truth. One thing I'm sure about, though, is that Ned Leeds will become Hobgoblin, probably either at the end of the movie or post-credits. Jacob Batalon, the guy that plays Ned, posted these photos of him, and he's a lot slimmer now and getting fitted for like some kind of costume, so yeah, it's happening. Another thing that's being said is that Peter will get the Venom symbiote in the post credit scene of the film, which would be totally awesome, and that would set us up for Secret Wars. It's totally possible for this to happen because Venom is now in the MCU. Alright, now on to some Batman stuff. So, we have some new promo art for the movie. Here's a couple photos with the logo, which look pretty badass. And then here's one with Batman and the Riddler that says Vengeance. I really like the Riddler's design for the movie. Even cooler though is this one. This should totally be the poster for the movie. But that's not all. This one is my favorite. It's like a propaganda poster or something made up of a bunch of newspaper clippings. It's pretty cool. Oh yeah, and I can't forget this animated one, which is cool as well. With the Riddler and probably the Court of Owls being the villains of the first film, sources have stated that Barry Kogan, or Kyogen, whatever, this guy that played Drew Egg in Eternals, is playing Stanley Merkel in the film. Stanley Merkel is one of Jim Gordon's favorite officers. They're like best friends. But a lot of people including some sources that I've read, are saying that he'll actually be the Joker in the sequel. So, that's something. Alright, now on to Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City will have a wide variety of characters from the first two games. So let's go over all the characters that we'll see in the film, starting with Resident Evil 1. From the Stars Alpha team, we'll see Chris Redfield, who's the team's marksman. In the film, along with Jill, Wesker, and Richard Aiken, he enters the mansion to search for his missing teammates from Bravo Team. I don't know how closely the movie will adapt the game as far as plot goes, seeing as to how the stories of 1 and 2 will be combined, but I do know that Chris will interact with Leon and Claire a lot throughout the movie. Chris and Claire apparently grew up in Raccoon City in an orphanage, and he heard a lot of stories about the Umbrella Corporation growing up. While Claire believed the stories, Chris did not. Chris Redfield is a small town hero. Right here! And now he's part of the Raccoon City Police Force. Umbrella Corporation has a virus, and the virus infects Raccoon City. If we don't contain this, it could threaten the whole world. Chris has to become more than just a small town hero. He has to become this action hero. What's really cool about our movie is that it is very much an adaptation of the games. We gotta get out of here. It's like I'm living in the video game and it's really, really exciting. Get behind me! Jill Valentine is Chris's partner on Alpha Team and enters the Spencer Mansion with the rest of the team. From the trailers, it looks like she may be in some sort of relationship with Wesker, which is really weird because that never happened in the game. And from some of the photos that we've seen, Jill's outfit has been changed a little bit from his video game counterpart. But she's still wearing that blue tube top underneath, so is there potential for her to encounter Nemesis in a later installment? Oh my god, 
I love horror films. I always go, if this really happened, how would I survive? Where are they? It's a Jill. It's guns. Really? What? Someone should confiscate that. Jill is a little bit crazy. What would the worst way to die be? You're a freak, Valentine. She works in the police force in this small town. Hey! You snooze, you lose. What? It's Jill Sandwich now. She's very loyal. Go get the others. I'll find a way out. If you don't mess with her, come on. She's just so badass. Albert Wesker is a Star's Alpha Team leader who leads the team into the mansion. In the game, Wesker was actually employed by Umbrella and was leading the team to their deaths. But in this version, he's a legit good guy who gets corrupted as the film progresses. So whatever he witnesses in the mansion changes him, and by the end, he's the Wesker that we all know. While the whole dating Jill thing seems ridiculous, he's the one that plays Moonlight Sonata on the piano in the bar to open a hidden passage instead of Jill. Albert Wesker is known in the games to be one of the key villains of the story. We didn't want him to be a stereotypical villain. We wanted him to be likable. The faster we find him, the faster we can get out of here. We're seeing who he really is underneath the sunglasses. It's an origin story of that brings that version of Wesker. We watch this character evolve and become the Wesker that we all know from the games. It really does feel like we're making the movie version of the game. I'm not really offering you a choice. Richard Aiken is a minor character in the game, being one of the Bravo team members who fall victim to the monsters in the mansion. Aiken is found by Rebecca Chambers after being bitten by the Yawn, a mutated snake. Despite getting some serum to heal, he quickly succumbs to his injury and dies. Traditionally, it's Barry Burton who enters the mansion with Jill and Wesker, but for the film's sake, he's been replaced by Richard. So I wonder if he awaits the same fate in the movie. Kevin Dooley is another minor character in the first game. While he wasn't technically a STARS member, he piloted the Bravo team's helicopter to the Arkley Mountains to investigate some bizarre murders. After a suspicious engine failure, the chopper went down and Dooley stayed behind as the Bravo team ventured out into the woods. But then, Dooley was attacked by a pack of Cerberus and got killed. His body was discovered the following night by Alpha team member Joseph Frost, who then shared the same fate. My guess is that Dooley will only be in a scene or two for the film, probably just when Alpha team arrive at the mansion. Brad Vickers is the Alpha team's pilot known as Chicken Heart Vickers for always fleeing whenever danger is present. If you remember, in the very first game, he abandons everyone at the mansion when they're attacked by the Cerberus. However, he does come back later at the end of the game to rescue them. I wonder if Brad will have a big part in this one, or maybe he'll come back in the sequel to be killed by Nemesis. Enrico Marini is the Bravo team's captain. While he doesn't have a huge role in the game, He's found underground by Chris and Jill, and he tells them that someone on their team is a traitor. But unfortunately, he's shot dead by said person before he can get the name out. And of course, we all know who he's talking about. So I'm assuming the same thing will happen in the movie. As I've mentioned many times before, Lisa Trevor was one of Umbrella's first human test subjects. Her father was George Trevor, who built the mansion. Umbrella killed her parents and then experimented on her for many years using the T-Virus and confined her to the catacombs beneath the mansion. And in the game, she doesn't die because she's basically invincible, but at some point she does jump into an abyss. In the film, Lisa is seen hanging with Leon and Claire and it makes me wonder what exactly is going on. Is she just a victim in this one and not one of the antagonists? In this scene, we can see Leon and Claire watching some archival footage of the Ashford twins, who are known from Code Veronica. In the game, they are the children of Alexander Ashford, who is related to Edward Ashford, one of Umbrella's co-founders. After the sister, Alexia, injects herself with the T-Veronica virus and goes into cryostasis, 
her brother Alfred acts as both himself and his sister. It gets pretty weird. But it looks as though the film may be setting up for a potential sequel with the twins. And then, from Resident Evil 2, we have Leon S. Kennedy, who arrived in town for his first day on the job. It looks as though, in the film, Leon was pushed to becoming a cop by his father to put him on the right path. And with the trucker crashing in front of the RPD, it's hard to say if Leon and Claire will meet before entering or afterward. But, I do know at some point, Leon will encounter the liquor in the hallway the same way he did in the game. And, spoiler alert, thanks to a new teaser, he'll be the one to take out Birkin with a rocket launcher in the film's third act. Welcome to Raccoon City is very much a, an origin story, so we see Leon Kennedy's journey. For fans, Leon's an action hero, but we really want to go back to the original second game, where he's quite a nerdy, reluctant hero. Uh, guys. It was really important to cast the actor that could bring Leon Kennedy to life. We did not want someone that looked identical to the games but had no emotional connection. Woo! The fans are going to be happy with this movie because it's pulling very much from the games. Shall we go? Throughout the movie, we see Leon become the character that gamers will recognize. A rocket launcher? Found it in first class. Claire Redfield looks to be the film's main protagonist, with the storyline centering around her suspicions of Umbrella. In the game, Claire arrives in town to look for her brother Chris, who went missing after the mansion. She befriends Leon and they head to the RPD together for answers. The duo end up getting separated by a semi driven by a zombified truck driver. The film will play out kind of similar, with the trucker crashing, but this time he gives Claire a ride into town first. And I think the duo will meet up inside the RPD, as opposed to beforehand. It seems like she'll be in close contact with her brother Chris throughout the entire film too. Maybe even fight alongside him at some point. And from what it looks like in the trailer, she's the one that gives him the idea to go investigate the mansion. So, that's a bit different. This whole town's been poisoned. In our story, Claire Redfield is a runaway from Raccoon City. She's run away because she feels something was very wrong there. Now she's coming back to tell her brother some very important information. Why are you back here, Claire? Watch this. You gotta help us, Claire. Umbrella, we had a little incident. People are getting sick. We have to contain this. Claire is a rounded character. She has her own journey. She isn't just there to shoot guns. I love how rebellious she is. Come on. She's an absolute badass. We're gonna take Umbrella down. Sherry Birkin will make an appearance in the film, but to what extent remains to be seen. There's a shot here of a little girl, but I can't tell if this is Sherry or maybe a young Lisa Trevor. Still, it's hard to say if we'll see her pal around with Claire throughout the RPD. But, I hope we do. Annette Birkin is Sherry's neglectful mother. More interested in her research than her own daughter, she lets Sherry roam around aimlessly throughout the RPD. In the game, you encounter Annette a couple of times, with her dying either by a shootout with Ada, or a falling pipe that hits her in the head as the facility comes crashing down. From what it looks like, she may only have like a small cameo in the movie. Chief Irons was shown in the trailer being hunted down by a Cerberus in the RPD basement. In the game, Irons is the police chief who secretly was on Umbrella's payroll. When the Stars team tried to out Umbrella after the mansion, he had the whole thing covered up. And he's a bit of a creep, if I'm being honest. Throughout the game, he chased Sherry around the entire city practically. What did he actually want with her though? We don't know. In the movie, though, he seems a bit more normal and helps Leon and Claire fortify the RPD, at least for a while. Ben Bertolucci was a reporter in the game who was locked up by Irons for knowing too much. This carries over into the movie in that he's the one that tells Claire about Umbrella and the T-Virus outbreak, calling it a Chernobyl-level event. 
In the game, he only ever interacts with Leon and Ada before getting destroyed by Mr. X. In the film, though, it seems like he only talks with Claire on like some kind of videotape or something. Ada Wong has been mentioned for being in the film, and we know she will be, but there's no sign of her in the trailer or any photos as of yet. In the game, she was sent to obtain the G-Virus from Umbrella and actually got away. Well, not before falling to her death. Kinda. Ada has like nine lives, I guess. Anyway, so she developed a romantic relationship with Leon throughout the game, and it would be interesting to see this happen in the movie. Or maybe they're saving her for a different purpose. Some fans think that she'll be the one to kill Birkin instead of Hunk. William Birkin, of course, is our main antagonist. He's the one responsible for experimenting on Lisa Trevor and the Ashford twins with the T-Virus, and eventually creates the G-Virus. It's hinted that the orphanage was used to farm children to use for Umbrella's experiments. There's a shot here of Birkin working on a woman, who I'm guessing is Lisa Trevor. And like I mentioned with Ada, Birkin's death may come by other means. Instead of being gunned down by the USS, perhaps Ada kills him and takes the G-Virus. Or, maybe Lisa Trevor wakes up and attacks him and infects him, leading to his mutation. All we really do know is that Birkin will reach full G status, as seen here on the train. I wish that we could see some of his in-between phases, but I guess that's going to have to wait until we see the movie. And lastly, there's Hunk, who was shown briefly in the trailer. Well, I guess this is Hunk. It could very well just be a random Umbrella Soldier, but if it is, why? I mean, the cast doesn't list him as a character, although he might just be uncredited. Who knows? What are you doing out hit checking on a night like this, anyway? Eh? Used to live here, he said. Raccoon City! Better you than me. Watch out! <laughs> Story has a beginning. Lock the gates. Honey, we need to go now. Discover the origin of evil. What were Umbrella doing here? They were experimenting on him. This is my life's work. I'm not giving it to anybody. Vickers, this is Chief Irons. Pick up your damn radio! Claire, why are you back here? This whole town's been poisoned. If we don't contain this, it could threaten the whole world. You gotta help us, Claire. Let the world know what's really going on. guys that does it for from the red carpet episode 23 we got a good look at disney plus day and some characters from the upcoming resident evil welcome to raccoon city so as always thank you for watching and i'll see you on the next one